Hi Ranjit Chetan. Hi Rahul Chetan. Thank you so much for joining me and agreeing to talk to M4 TV uh, ahead of your big release on the 20th of May in India and 26th of May in Australia. Kida, um, alright. So Rahul Chetan, talking to you. Let me ask you: Five years in the Malayalam film industry as a filmmaker. Um, 2017 le there was your first feature film Ottamuri Valicha. 2018 Dakini. 2019 Kalanotam. 2020 Coco. And now 2022 Kidam. Five years, five films. While we see directors taking a break of eight and nine years after their first feature or after one project of theirs that does well, here is Rahul Riji Nair. releasing five films back to back tell me is this the way you function as a director ella varsha or release unda nu parne endengil formula undo not really someone had said that uh, anjosh mumbu oralu parnirunu after five years you would have done five films you would have taken it any day but it not ha- it was not the case when we started out mm-hmm. uh, when we as any aspiring filmmaker i also had my share of struggles so it was after Six or seven years of struggle that I made my first feature film, which was Ottamuri Valicha. So when we started out, we also wanted to make the uh, bigger commercial mainstream cinema. But as you, we also, I also pitched with the best of uh, production houses here, the most biggest of stars. But uh, most often those things never took off. It is very difficult to get an entry, especially as a beginner. So at that point, I the, my first thought was that I wanted to do something that I am very confident of, and I just wanted to uh, go ahead with it, uh, with the, whatever I believe as my first cinema. So all my films have not been with a big A-lister superstar or something like that. So I. never had to wait for their dates or anything so most often uh, whatever scripts that was appealing to me whichever films that i was confident of i just went ahead and did it so i was not very kind of very judgmental about myself when i started off uh, i am a self taught filmmaker i did not have a film school experience or i had not assisted anyone so i was not very critical about myself probably that was the part where i started with and uh, whatever gut feeling i had i just backed that uh, instinct and i went ahead with it so when i made automatic valicha i had the same questions the if is in make aari kaanum idakke evada varanu idin or audience undavo idu aari never had a star or and it was made on a very small budget but we were pretty sure that we are not going to do a big, uh, big commercial release for that film but we knew it had a different audience the film traveled across the globe through film festivals went through film society screenings it, okay. it found its own way i would say then finally it had an ott release and it eventually it won the kerala state award and many other recognition so when we started out we never knew all this would happen we just wanted to make the film that we believe in and i i just went full full on with it so after 5 years I, my policy hasn't changed from much i am probably in a much better position today or no much better uh, in in my career i am in a better stage where i can trust the stories that i want to say and uh, just go ahead with it because i can make it into a film i can bring it to theaters i can market it the way i want it uh, i can i have the support systems going for me you know so in that 5 years why all these films have I, I did not have a very big career path kind of defined i was not very prejudiced about it yeah. so what uh, what i was trying to do is if the dagini was a very big film in terms of its commercial aspects but the next film that i did was a very small independent cinema called kalanotam yes it which eventually won me the national award but i was not very judgmental of whether i should make a bigger film than this or smaller film than this i just wanted to narrate the stories i was confident of and i just wanted to to give it my 100% so it just happened that yeah in 5 years i made five films <laughs> so i i feel i take that as a more as a blessing and also i i i would probably want to thank all the people who have worked with me because most often those films when i started out were born out of pure passion it was not out of money or anything so all the people who back me all my uh, crew members whom all my cast all my producers who were invested money on it everyone was just backing this vision they never thought these films would do this much business or 
it will eventually make this much money it was all about making the films we love and then saying where it goes and yeah it's been a good journey now when i look back the i i never studied this professionally so and we did not come from a industry background we did not have much people backing us and anything so if we were too judgmental and if we were too skeptical about ourselves we would not have even started our journey 5 years later so i just i i just went with what i thought was the best i could do and i tried to put my life into it i i probably say i gave my everything to all the films that i made I, regardless of what results it has achieved uh, all the films are dear to me and yeah i just <laughs> went in with whatever i had in my hand rather than waiting for someone else to come and help me out which is so good because five films five years as a film maker and it's all about what you love and what you want to say angina parayare like good content etra cherudayalum etra valudayalum it will have its own audience and it will definitely get the honor that it deserves so i think it's so good that you're not very critical of what you put out chela samayangale nammal cheyna karyangal nammal bhayangar critical aayittu adine analyze cheyarund and in doing so what we do is we just start uh, disliking what we have put out as our project as our work but it's so good um uh, rahul chetan at the not only um, a filmmaker can learn the fact that they should not be very critical of what they're doing but or a sadharna or a human being doing whatever they are um they can learn the thing that you shouldn't be as critical as you are all the time when you put out work which is which is brilliant and i admire that nyan oru karyam padichu vannu rahul chetan edthu congratulations on that already um talking to you ranjit chetan uh, tell me rahul chetan has made five films in five years you have been a five on five ella padangalum you have been a part of uh, rahul chetan cinema uh, and you have had your set of roles uh, that absolutely proved uh, your metal as an actor ala appo tell me is there like a bond or something that you guys have signed rahul oru cinema cheyumbam ranjit will be there ranjit oru cinema cheyumbam rahul will be there is there like a bond that you have signed before you entered the film industry yeah so <laughs> so the thing is that so we started together uh, so otamuru yolsam was my first film as well so we were working together uh, before coming to cinema as well so uh, and we were in dream scene then i was in cinema so i was i was attending all the auditions onnu uh, kittanilla okay rahul was writing stories actually and uh, we were pitching in okay but it's not very easy okay to get your first film is very very hard so then then we thought like okay let's do a cinema we will produce it uh, let's do that so namakku cinema alla veru naranjodathund and no other excitement is there so so we thought like okay let's go with the potemuru realism uh, so it was a great decision we, it's not only really we we have our friends with us uh, first film studios is a family mm. so, so everyone came together for this cause actually so that was a starting point okay so we started together Yeah, totally. We thought another revelation, and then we went with Dagini and all the spy films. So yeah. it's it's like he's more brother to me. So me and Ella were part of it, and I'm some of the kids. So I think so, and yeah. So that's the boon that. Come on, oh. Paid is a time. I mean, like more than that alone, all the paid in the place. So no. I mean, the same kind of stuff. I mean, me and Ella were just like. and all that is part of it brilliant brilliant so good to know that you know you've come together as a team and you know encouraging each other's uh, passion yeah, so who is part of this production right and the executive producer very friends so angana oru travel la we met vini vini was vini was there and uh, dagini's production team yes. so angana and their friendship started uh, now he also joined this first frame production so, this is all a friend and family friends and family uh, so adanganeyana povunu 
Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Talking to you, Rahul. It's, it's so good to, to know you, that, uh, considering the fact the that you guys have backed each other so well, yeah, and and now that there's another friend of yours who has joined uh, with his first film production, Fairy Dream Productions, Vini um, Trenu Chetan. Um, it's it's so wonderful to see uh, people so passionate about cinema, wanting to give good cinema uh, to the Malayalam film industry or film industry, Indian cinema in general. Congratulations on that. It's it's so lovely that you shared this whole friendship story. Uh coming back to you Rahul Chetan, um the teaser of Kedam looks absolutely wonderful. A oru edge of the seat experience tharana polatha oru oru teaser thanne aayirunu. I'm sure movie um angane aayirikkum, but for that we have to wait until the 20th of May in India and 26th of May in Australia. Um but tell me When was the idea to write a crime or cyber crime thriller uh came into existence or what was the thought process when you actually sat to write uh Kedam which which completely or absolutely translates to pest ale so where did this idea come into existence or give birth from uh I don't uh, since the as I said the film is a thriller so I did not want to kind of give out more details on the story just to not spoil the experience but the incident that we are uh, the first thought of some kid and the idea of kid and came from something that is very common in our life okay. uh, that issue that I don't want to put it out there but it is uh, part of the cyber stalking cyber bullying kind of a framework that <laughs> or the bracket on it with that issue comes in uh but that issue is something that we are very we very well uh, what you know very well know about something that has probably happened in our family or in our friend circle yeah. but something that's very serious to be addressed yeah. and uh, that was a starting point of this whole idea of kingdom then i had this first thought in mind that i wish with rajisha she also was excited we wanted to do a film together after coco yeah. uh but uh, we were we had two or three ideas pitching in and we both of us felt this was probably we are in the right time to say this and the, that's why we wanted to do this first so <laughs> that was the whole conversation starting point was from that particular issue because when i narrated this idea to her she also said i i know this i it has happened in my life yeah so uh, everyone we know knew uh, had some sort of relevance or association they had some sort of a problem like this happening to someone they know or maybe in their own family sure. so that was starting point of kingdom and th- from there we developed it so in this as you know in the cyber space uh, all our our private lives are becoming a very little uh, even without we ourselves knowing our privacy is being compromised yeah so so even when we are doing this all of us are probably doing this from a house and yeah. we are putting our a part of our house out there in the open now so uh, or, or our office a part of our private space out there in the open so uh, even when you click a photo inside a house or if it's a selfie we are revealing what our house looks like or how what it earlier our house used to be a mystery it, the we only knew the only our friends who came inside the house knew it so yeah. our private lives are becoming quite strangled i feel in this era, social media era and uh, especially uh, with all our uh, other public life uh, this privacy is getting compromised in a big way so there was a discourse of privacy and we are almost if I, if we lose our phone today uh, a part of our life gets stuck yeah. because we depend on it for a lot of things not just for browsing or anything even from food delivery to bank transfers to everything it's all over the phone so so now, now we are literally giving the control of our life to a device in a much bigger way than what we have actually imagined it to be so yeah. there are a lot of privacy issues associated with it also yeah so that is something that was also a great triggering point for kingdom to start to start working on well said and actually well explained considering that today without our phones we absolutely are lost um once that's gone we had gone that's how we feel ala Uh, but tell me, this is very intriguing. 
uh, there are so many actors so many wonderful actors in the malayalam film industry but i'm just a little curious why rajisha vijayan now i know that um she's a wonderful anchor we know her as an anchor uh, but the body of work she has as an actor is just wonderful it's just so good um we have seen her as a bubbly june we have seen her as a athlete we have seen her as a serious pt teacher uh, absolutely everything the roles she picks are just so unique or probably these are the kind of roles that people approach her with which is so amazing i think she has just built that entire portfolio for herself in the film industry and we also know that she what big uh, she is as an asset to the malayalam film industry rather the film industry in general um so with rajisha vijayan what can we expect um this role radhika uh, who's a cyber crime analyst if i'm not wrong in the film uh, with kidam i think the you have answered the question also i mean she's just such a fab actor and uh, so she's a very delight to work with as ranger said earlier she's thoroughly professional very sorted with her things um even for the slight of of things she's very sorted in that sense like she comes very pre- well prepared on time yeah. uh gives us uh, works with us to make that shot better so she's very uh professional in that sense to work with and also she's such a good actor so we as uh, as ranjit said earlier we she we were friends even before coco so when coco came into us probably I, we, i think i should give more credit to her for both these films happening because she was the one who pushed me to do coco then and then killed him also at that because she loved the script of coco i was planning to do something else at that point and the covid lockdown was happening and yeah. all that noise was happening yes so dejisha wanted me to do coco at that point she she was very open to it she had a lot of films lined up she made dates for that film uh and she pushed me to do that at that point and even with kiram uh, we wanted to do a film together yeah. again after coco but we we never thought this was going to happen this soon but uh when that first idea was exciting for both of us again she went out of her way i would say to find time for this film because it came in a very later stage she already had some commitments before yeah. with and she's not just in malayalam now she's Definitely. working in tamil telugu so she made time for this film and she deserves equal credit for making this film come true i mean uh, her in that sense she's a role model for all of us in that way the way she pursues uh, the things that she believes in and she, the way she works hard for it so rajisha is a very good friend uh, so we when you work with friends you tend to have a lot of freedom also totally. to uh <clears throat> more than a director actor relationship we also have we can push her to do certain things in more uh, all that kind of sense of freedom there's a lot of good conversations that happens around it yeah. uh she is also open to ideas to discuss things yeah. and if there's something i say did not work for me she's she's very willing to listen to it so there's a lot of sense of freedom that comes when i work with her she also we have a great mutual respect for each other so that also works in a better way so yeah it was not intended or planned but okay. yeah both these things happened very soon yeah thank you thank you for sharing that i think she's such a professional actor that all of you want to work with her alle rajisha chechi big big hi to you if you're watching and many congratulations on all your projects in tamil malayalam telugu hindi if at all and um i hope to talk to you soon and many many uh, congratulations and best wishes on kiram uh, but coming back to you uh, ranjit chetan you have had combination scenes with the legendary shrinivasan sir i mean um, what do i say we have all grew up watching his films the characters he portrays um, his absolute masterpiece on screen is all we have witnessed all these years ale so how was it to be working with someone so legendary so experienced who knows his craft who knows absolutely everything at least most of it about cinema what was it to be like working with him 
yes actually so it was like uh, working with srinivas and sir was like a dream come true definitely because we we our our I mean, childhood everything right and then we we grown up for watching his films basically so uh, this is the first time that i'm meeting him personally even so and uh, i think uh, see it's, it's a kiram is more about uh, father uh, daughter relationship more like okay srinivas and sir and dijesh vijayan relationship uh and and it's like we had like couple of scenes okay not couple of scenes yes uh, four or five scenes basically yeah. together uh, yeah. with the legend actually so it it was like uh, like any other actors i was also nervous <laughs> uh to show i mean uh, to go for the first shot actually yeah. but it's 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 different okay uh yeah so it was like you know, uh, like any other actors i was also nervous right i mean they engine and perform ji am poonu the with a legend actually so so the major thing is that fully uh, uh, suggestions are parain basically okay so uh, i cannot tell everything like it was an intense scene that we shot for kiram that was a first day shot actually definitely so uh, like okay yan yan i was like okay in the mind like the the ingena and the ingena sanangal yan parayumbam how he is going to respond okay so uh, whether uh, i will be going for a second take because of my issues or uh, so that was there in my mind okay yeah. so but when when uh, we went for the action i think everything everything went smooth and he was so comfortable he will make others comfortable that's a major thing okay it, it's not like okay we cannot see a uh, 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 he's of like more than almost 50 years of experience but it's like he i think pulli ipulum pulli re first padam pole and the treat that's a different thing that's a learning for us everyone everyone I yeah. think Rahul can share more information, right? When uh, I mean uh, more uh, incidents, basically. Yeah. Uh, when we work in Vienna, so but it was like uh, dream come true, basically a dream come true for me uh, to work with a legend, legendary actor like Srinivas and Sir. Brilliant! Many congratulations on one of your dreams coming true of working with such a legend. A uh, Korean legend's in your work, she had a chance to get that day, Chetan. And um, coming back to you, Rahul Chetan. you have had the chance uh, to direct a legend like shrinivasan sir uh, but tell me while you were writing the story of this uh, cyber crime thr- thriller did you already have him on your mind e radhika and achan the character okay shrinivasan sir ne thanne aanu idu naan ezhudunnadennu parney ezhudiyadano alla okay nya idu ezhudam ee character build cheyam adine shesham we can approach whoever that is what was the process looking like for you um ezhudumbam undarunnilla i did not have a have him on my mind when i was writing it uh, once i wrote the script there was this father character throughout the film and it's a very major role other paarengilum prominent aayittulla oru nalla face i mean oru nalla actor cheyanam nalla aagraham undarunnu so we are absolute fanboys of sri nisa so we, we i probably consider him one of the biggest in, of my inspiring filmmakers and writers that i the whose work has influenced me in a big way so i am a huge fan by of sri nisa and i was very skeptical of approaching him and narrating it even i was very tense actually yeah. because i did not know how he would react to it how he would like it and all that so I so I still took the chance. I went and met him, and I said, and we also the thing that was haunting me was this: almost three weeks we had continuous night shoots. That is from six in the evening to morning six. So he's is at his age on uh, the health and everything. Considering it is very difficult for all these night shoots to go through, yeah. so uh, that was also there on my back of my mind. Where when I met him, I was not sure whether he would like it, wow. he would accept it because of the, all this. So I, I again, without being too judgmental about it, I just went and met him, narrated the script. He loved the idea, and he said we will do it in the first meeting. Yeah. And then I was, and I was like, sir, I have a problem. So he said, what's it? I said the. we need to shoot this at night so i try my best to make it comfortable for you to not take it too later and all he said see that's the way i've written the script there's no other choice you have to do shoot it at night so let's do it so and we, there were times when he shot till 3 and 4 in the morning and he was as energetic as anyone else on the set even when we we, we were actually getting a little bit stressed out because we did not want him to want to bother him at 3 am in the morning but he was like 
just tell me if you want another shot i'll i'll be there so even for the shot of another actor he used to stay there to give his suggestion and everything so uh, even when he does a shot from behind him he would stay there for that shot he would not go back to his caravan or anything so he's he's not just a i mean we all know him as a legend but what fascinated more is the fact that such a great human being that's that's something uh, that probably we all experienced at that moment uh, uh, all of with all those days with him so we were like uh, very excited fanboys around him so we, every time there was a break between shots we made him sit down and narrate the stories behind all those iconic films that he did so <laughs> that was our, probably my biggest uh, film schooling experience that i had probably <laughs> why making kiram because yeah. every time and he is not a guy who goes back to his van to yeah. after his shot or after his scene he just sits there calmly he's uh, he's always surrounded by people he treats everyone equally it's it's not like there's no hierarchy in front of him he's such a great human being such clarity of thought such mm-hmm. uh, such vastness of his uh, experience also the way he has read through the content he's discussing with us even his ideas he, he discussed a couple of ideas that he is working on as in the script so all those things really fascinates me that even at his age the fire to do all that uh, even as an actor the way he contributes to everything he comes well prepared to the set it's not something like he comes there off without reading the scene he's there he knows all the dialogues he's there fully prepared even so not from an actor perspective we as a writer director we have all known him through his work but yeah to work with him in person to directly of that yeah to experience the greatness of that human being yes uh, the way he treats people the way he is face grounded the way he discusses his thoughts the way he has clarity in his communication all that actually influences us and as we all know his sense of humor is on another level so totally. the way the way he makes everyone at ease and everything so it's a delight i mean uh, probably the biggest recognition i had uh, i have one till my life is this opportunity that i got to work with him i so i nice. not just me everyone including ranger there are a lot of new actors new technicians who worked on this film and mm-hmm. we, we all went the day he finished his last shot and when he went back we were we literally had tears in our eyes because we we are like oh yeah we worked with senior so yeah, so totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> i still remember the first shot when i saw it on the monitor i was thinking oh man this this man who had seen grown up all these years is this so real is this yeah. happening have i directed yeah. him <laughs> on in on a frame that i have designed and he's narrating the lines that i wrote once so that was a moment that i would i would probably cherish bigger and uh, i think that's the biggest memory that i would crush for a long time yeah many congratulations on that and i think all that you spoke like i could actually see that spark uh, in your eyes that you know yeah, yeah, that, all the happiness that you're absolute fan boy so i it comes through to me to always so beautiful 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 thanks for sharing that with all of us and your experience of working with the legend um back to you uh, ranjit chetan tell me what kind of research did you do for uh, a character that is kind of uh, in a negative shade in this film criminal ana and who works uh, at a scrap yard and um, also edoru karyam cheyumbulum i personally believe that research is very important e interview na varumban thane like i did my research adu cheyidilangi probably the questions i'm asking would go hey why or and would not make sense alle appo idu polathe oru crime thriller oru cyber crime thriller le oru bhagam aagunathu is not um, easy and moreover i think it needs the research so what kind of research did you do for your character did you do any research or did you not do any research and if yes what kind of research did you do and what was it like yeah so so basically i was telling you right i mean uh, so the character of coco uh, so it was very loving and we know someone like that uh, or we have seen a person like uh, shiva okay so it was more easy for me okay even then i i met some of the peon who was working in schools and like that to get just to interact with them to understand how they uh, how the normal day is happen for him so and and coming back to this uh, i mean freedom fight gidu and saying it's an it profession so it profession how many can i am it how it work out how it is 
അവരുടെ ബിഹേവിയർ എങ്ങനെയായിരിക്കും I was already working in IT. Right? Yes. So, so it was easy for me. But when it comes to Kedam, it is totally different. Uh, uh, we, I never had a reference. Uh, I never knew a person like that. So this character has some negative shades. And, and uh, the character name is Aji. And uh, he is running a scrap yard. So I haven't met anyone like that. So similarly, so I will do my preparations. Okay? After reading my script, I'll try to meet people. or i I'll, i'll try to get the reference mm-hmm. so kidam vanna samayathum like uh, i went in search for a scrap yard <laughs> so <laughs> i met some people uh, there and engenaan avare daily parivadi avare okay avare engenaan avaru nadakkunnathu avare engenaan avare i mean work cheyyunathu karan we have to do something right i mean or make belief undaaganam ennale adu oru act avathullo adu adu manasilaakki So Rockley, I had my preparations. I used to have this for all my films. Beautiful. So, yeah, it was there. It's so beautiful that as an artist, you have done your research for all the roles that you've played. Uh, many congratulations on that already because it's so significant. All right. Uh, but ahead of this interview i was i was doing this little research and cautious statistics ake naan vaichondirunnu appo kandu vannadana um in 2017 this came out uh, that said 16.7 million consumers have had their credentials stolen without them knowing about it um and semantic navarnya or a research firm uh, brought this out which says um the top 20 countries in the world that has the highest cyber crime rates first is the united states of america 11th stands india and 19th is australia which is which is worrying um, but tell me what kind of research did you do uh, rahul chetan before going into uh, the production of this film this idea just came through uh, i had a, f- a friend who was already running a cyber security company here in kerala so they are a startup and they are doing working with some of the biggest clients in the, across the globe so Uh, the first thing that i had was i went to them and i discussed all the possibilities of what can happen what can not happen uh, see the, for example we see that whatsapp is encrypted and it is uh, full proof and other thing that's what the my probably my belief about it was but then that's not the case in reality anyone can use drop on it or read your messages and that's and that doesn't require it, it doesn't it's not a one of thing also doesn't so require rocket science alone uh, rocket science anymore so it is becoming very prevalent and everything so i was also taken aback by the extensive kind of data that one can access about another person's life through their phones and everything i saw a couple of demonstrations of their how this is being done and all that and it really shook me up in many ways <laughs> first of all i myself became concerned about my privacy and security at times because <laughs> then that was my first thought then see if i if i can put in the same thought into another person said through this film effectively then that's something that people deserve to know about their life because more often we see nammal tamasha ait parayo ende data und endu cheyana there is lot there is lot we can do with another person's data and even we does not even require data you know if um, in any case of neda if you if you are on social media if i want to stalk you on social media i will see your postings find out your behavioral patterns from it i can frame things that i can spam you with without even hacking you so and you might fall for it so if you want to if you want to cast me in your next film then please go through my profile <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that sort of uh, we have as i said our public life is way too much now so there's yeah. that i uh, caution of privacy is very very little so in that sense it, it took a little bit of a it was a little bit of a honey experience for me also personally to know that so so much of things can be out there and how we can control another person's life if we get access to that data so i had a technical consultant who was with me from all stages of this film okay. he was there in the pre production stage when while i was writing i had a meeting arranged for him with vijisha so that she could get some insights into this job she works as a cyber security analyst in the film yes. so she gets that sort of information from him as ranjit said it's a part of the actors preparation also so 
uh then he worked well, once we finished uh, finished the shooting he came i took took the film to him and showed him uh to ensure that it is technically correct that we are showing right. we, we did not want to kind of have a very cinematic very over the board kind of a, a visual to be displayed but at the same time it had to be engaging and yes point, it had to be point blank of what people is most often we have for cinematic purpose we screw up a bit a bit of what the reality is but makes sense and the creative liberty in the pair la i think yeah, yeah. so i did not want to to i i want to do that i wanted to try and push, uh, put this out as genuine as possible so i showed uh, probably the film will give that kind of sense i strongly feel and um, other one other session i showed it to him got this feedback we went back to the vfx uh, storyboarding again to get those things corrected and wow. even with the final out we have ensured that okay these things are technically possible these are technically feasible this is probably the we want to ensure that that technicality of it is rightly portrayed yeah. without being not to simply it should not be very simplified or it should not be very overly overly dramatic it should just be right to connect with people so that was the idea with which we worked on amazing amazing that's so good e cyber security in help cheyda aal thane aano chetinte friend nu parne adhe adhe okay great yeah. kudos to him as well considering that he has been uh, throughout the process of making yes. uh, this film many congratulations on that as well i know that you know technically everything is going to be perfect in this film now that you've done so much research and have put efforts in actually yeah. putting uh, to through to this audience perfectly so one more one more thing when i went to meet srini sir for the first time and i was narrating with him so one of his inputs was we need to portray this rightly because he's not very tech savvy guy he doesn't use his phone or anything yeah so um, i was confused if he is getting what i was trying to say in terms of the storytelling and everything yeah. so he said idu mottathi manasilai illa nee parayna pala karyangalum but if you show me the visuals probably i would be able to relate to it to connect to it better okay. so i think you should put it out in that vision perspective of the film in that way that say people of my age people who are not very tech savvy also can attach to relate it. and so understand like uh, relate to it so that was the input that he gave and i felt it was very valid because even before the shooting process i went to him with many of the screenshots that we had of all these how these tools work and all that so i went to him i showed him this is what is possible from your phone or all the phone hack either the three information for the home that this is how we can control it how we can make use of it and everything so yeah then uh, barna our input was very relevant and we have used it in the films uh, visual narrative also amazing amazing um I'm sure this film is definitely going to be technically perfect in terms of uh, the information that you are going to be providing with regards to cyber crime cyber bullying uh, but one thing is that oru theater le poi oru film nammal kaanumbam either you know we come back home with this feeling of oh idu oru kore chirikkan undayirunnu ee padathile kore karyangal chindikkan undayirunnu idu oru feel good film aayirunnu nammal ingane categorize cheyarille um you know we have our own perceptions about what uh, the film wanted to convey or what the di- the filmmaker or the director wanted to tell to his audience but tell me what is the purpose of making kidam what do you want the audience to perceive um out of this film after they watch it after they um walk out of the theaters or cinema halls um so what is like the purpose for making kidam see i i never started uh, this script or approach this film from a standpoint that okay i want to say this social message or mm-hmm. you want this particular thing out i never approach any of my films with it i believe that cinema can i approach cinema from a very simplistic standpoint of a story that i want to narrate mm. end of the day it's storytelling for me so i see that as a story it makes sense to me it is something relevant to me but i believe if it's narrated in a way that is engaging uh and people can appreciate it that's the first part of it so what later on happens for not just for cinema for any art form i believe we are engaging with any art for the pleasure of it that's the first thing i feel and if that art can later on create a bigger conversation that is a bigger classical uh, thing that can happen for any art so 
I, I, we, there are cinema that is done primarily from a very serious kind of a conversation perspective and all that. There are, I, I feel that we cannot brand all cinema in one particular bracket saying that all cinema has to have this. There are cinema that is made just to entertain, just to for that pleasure of forgetting everything, just to be there, out there, laugh, enjoy, clap out loud, howl at your top of your voice and just forget it. It's just to entertain. There are, but finally, I feel all films have to engage in some form of the other with the audience. Otherwise, it, it's a bad film. It won't work. So primarily, as a filmmaker, I look at the story as whether it can only have the potential to engage. Is it a good story worth narrating? That's the only thing that I look forward to. It. But then there are a lot of things that come around with it. You know, it is not done purposefully. It is not done like I want to make a message out of this or I want to educate people on this. There's nothing that comes out consciously. Yeah. I feel as a human being, as an artist, it reflects whatever I am, whatever my politics is, whatever my thought process is, it will reflect in the film knowingly or not knowingly. Definitely. So, and if that uh, thought process or if that, finally, if that film or that cinema of whatever art, beyond being that means of giving an uh, engagement or giving a sense of pleasure while watching it, if it creates a deeper conversation, then I think it's, it, it, really? it will leave a mark, it will leave a mark for a very long time. Beautiful, beautifully said. Oru project ne, nammal oru project matra maite kana da. Nammal snehich adine porth, you know, alkar dertte etti kondu pogumbam. Uh, I'm sure it'll have its own audience, and it's so amazing that you're not very critical of your work, which most of us are. So, kore padi kyan gitti interview ina. But tell me, arthu varshathini 2023 ke nengal already randu veerum bond sign cheydu vechi tondo. I parathle nyan ondo, I parathle nii ondo na varnete. Is there something like that for 2023? It's always on. Apam ini ini scripted the UTM alada matra alada chapter raavi alada so. <laughs> yeah. I think we haven't, Satitil, uh, from my standpoint, I haven't, of course, he's a friend, uh, brother, and everything. And, yeah. and uh, probably he's one of those people who probably enjoy the success in my life more than what I do. Uh, he's the one who has been, not just him, I have a lot of friends who have been behind me who has enjoyed my success more than what I have personally. So, uh, all that is said and done, but we eventually we have never spoken that adutha amak ee cinema cheyyam alle indina car roll thara angane we have never spoken in that way uh, <laughs> I, as a director i feel uh, see I, I i have a certain trust in him as an actor so there are certain roles that i feel he will fit the mold in. so because i I've, i've seen him for the longest time i worked with him for the longest time so i know what he can do what he cannot do yeah. so when there's some kind of writing uh, that happens i feel okay he might fit in this so it's a very later stage that he comes on board so actually <laughs> so it has never happened that way so and uh, we also know that for see he, he had worked in all my films not avan adine ede role aanu abhinayikkunnathu allengil adil avana undo ennu ariyunnathinu munbu thottu he has been part of my process he, he helps me with the writing we we discuss a lot on the script writing part of it. We bounce ideas of each other. So he's been with me, or we have been together for a very long time in that sense. Like probably, I think it's not like very early. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, like may you always stick together and uh, push each other while creating more uh, cinema. Uh, but we have seen you, Ranjit Chetan. You has, you're such a wonderful artist, be it that Pavam Piyun in Coco, Dakini Agate, Ottamuri Vilchim Agate, now Kedam. So, best wishes. We know how wonderful you are as an artist, and I'm sure you're just going to take off to the next level with every other project that you both create together or uh, with many other filmmakers that you're going to be working in the future. Good luck on that already. One last question to the both of you. Why do you think that the audience should come and watch Kedam? Yeah, okay. So, so basically, Kedam, uh, 
okay so we are not telling that the kingdom is the best movie that you can watch something like that angana alla it's a small movie uh, and it's like 2 hours ana adinte mottham running time mm-hmm. and it's like bore adikkatilla okay normally uh, on a layman on a layman point ipo naan endu kondu cinema kaanna it should entertain us right i mean okay. uh, rather than necessary it should entertain us that is it that is definitely that okay so it has all these things for an entertainment film what all needed it's there in kingdom and it's like Uh, a two hours like okay you completely be in uh, uh, kingdom and uh, uh, you regret undavilla kandu kenne okay adu kandu okay i am itra samayam poi angane onikkil undavilla totally and uh, fully you will be in adayirikum enikku thonnu kingdom nu parana ipo see when you are part of one film and adine oru oru process mottathi kandu varum scripting mudal and the end production kandu nammal and out kaanumbo namukku judge cheyan bayangara paadayirikum but we have to find some time to understand okay audience is engane edukum nalla angane alla enikku thonnu njan adu kaanana samayath enikku thonnu definitely adu orikkalum bore adikatha oru oru thriller thana irikkum annana enikku thonnu orikkalum oru regret undavathilla in kandu ennalla point very nice very nice um and of course captain of the ship has to say why uh, the audience has to come to the theaters on 20th of may to watch kingdom Uh, honestly i don't want to brag about this but uh, see as a filmmaker as an artist the, the sense of completion that we get is from the audience or cinema adinu vendi or onnara kollathu effort the travel and see as i am re- we are closing by to the uh, release of the film yeah i can only play back the struggles behind this film in my head so that's the only thing i see and i am very excited to see how the audience comes around the the sense of completion that we get as an artist is from the audience yeah. so the end of the day we all try on it it's not the money or anything that associated with the cinema that that really motivates us it is the passion to do the kind of work that we want to do and yeah. how the audience will accept it so uh, that as for kingdom I, for any like any other filmmaker i have given my best shot and not just me for everyone who has worked on the film they all believed in this film even from the starting from the light boys to the production assistants to everyone everyone believed in this film and from the one day one onwards and gave their heart and soul to it so i am just the one face of it representing the film the, there was a hundred other people who are behind me who have given their day and night for this film so everyone has given their best for it no one wants to make a mediocre film when they set out everyone wants to be, make the best film so we we feel that we, like any other film we have done in the past we feel we have given it our best and from a filmmaker standpoint if you ask me i have 100% uh, confidence on the film on this is the film that i want to make i haven't compromised a bit on it and i had the support system for it i had the backing of all the people who worked on this film for it even now we are all excited and we are all waiting for that film to come out now so yeah. uh, i mean just i as renjit said we are ho- we are really hoping the film won't disappoint you know and uh, we are really confident that it, 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 the, the point that we discussed earlier i think beyond it being an entertainer beyond it being an engaging piece of content we strongly believe this will also trigger some serious conversations or some serious thought that on the viewer that will uh, probably leave an impact and uh, that's what we are very keen on to make films that probably stay with you uh, first we when we wanted to coin the tagline for first one studios we made uh, our tagline was stories with the heart stories so heart. Uh, so definitely i think this is one story that has a heart at its right place so i feel it will come through very well said very well said now that you've done uh, so much research so much work and you've absolutely worked with some brilliant artists including ranjit chetan i think the film is going to definitely definitely reach out to the audience and engage with them uh, exactly uh, or probably even uh, in the most um, in 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 a way that is much much more wider than uh, what you have imagined it to be so many congratulations on making kingdom and all the very very best thank you sapna thank you it's a, it's a pleasure talking to you a big shout out to all the malayali audience in australia thank you for loving our films and for all the support it really means a lot to us please continue doing so definitely uh, 
if you can't watch it and miss it if you miss it in theaters the film will definitely come on out tt and Definitely. other platforms please so good so good them. so good thank you so much both of you for giving uh, m4 tv your time and talking with me on chai chats but yet another time everyone out there kidam releases on may 20th in india may 26th in australia um, and it's produced by first print studios co-produced by Fairy Frame Production. So please go watch it. Ningal ellarum, ningal the family might. You should definitely go and watch Kedam, considering that the interview, the discussion has been so interesting. I'm sure either edge of the seat experience thane ayirikum. I'll also await uh, to get that experience. But please go and watch it. I will catch up with another episode on Chai Chats with Sapna. Until then, this is Sapna signing off. Adios, amigos.